Imagine that you're a journalist at a big media organisation and then imagine that you're the only one of your colleagues who has a particular protected legal characteristic. So for example, you might be the only black person, uh, the only Asian, Muslim, gay or disabled worker. Years into your employment, a new boss arrives, the culture changes and suddenly things begin to go very sour. Your organisation starts publishing news and opinion in which people with your particular protected characteristic are misrepresented, vilified, and made out to be somehow mad, bad, and a danger to others. Well, what do you do? Do you stay quiet, do you leave, or do you challenge your bosses? My name is Catherine O'Donnell, and for 14 years, I was a journalist at The Times. For me, this wasn't hypothetical. As the only trans person at The Times, I had to make a decision to stand up not just for people like myself, but for the primacy of truth and accuracy in journalism. The Times has been heavily criticised over its hostility towards trans people by human rights and equality NGOs, by members of a parliamentary select committee, other journalists and by the LGBT community. I challenged editor John Withrow and News UK CEO Rebecca Brooks over biased, inaccurate and dishonest reporting and comment in the Times and in the Sunday Times. My concerns were ignored, trivialised or simply denied. Standing up to the editor blighted my career and in January 2018 I lost my job in a redundancy that made neither business sense nor was supported by a single scrap of documentation. I took my case with the help of my amazing barrister Robin White to an employment tribunal. Former Times colleagues came forward to give evidence on my behalf of a toxic bullying culture at the paper in which dissension and difference was punished. Former news editor Martin Barrow told how he had learned that the paper had set about vilifying another minority, Muslims, and how sexism and bullying was rife. Another colleague who was disabled told how bosses cruelly targeted him for removal from the paper despite his excellent performance record. One former colleague told the tribunal how he had been physically assaulted by editor John Withrow following a minor disagreement. Yet you won't find a single mention of their courageous evidence anywhere in the tribunal's judgment. We made a groundbreaking case. When the Times knowingly publishes inaccurate and dishonest stories and opinions about trans people and other protected minorities, it made the workplace, my workplace, discriminatory and unsafe. Few people know it, but the Times is exceptional in that it is bound to accuracy and integrity and political neutrality by an undertaking with the government signed in 1981 by Rupert Murdoch. When the editors knowingly publish untrue, biased or misleading information, they are in breach of that binding undertaking. To my shock and to the shock of the witnesses and of my barrister, the tribunal decided that it believed the Times' bosses even when their evidence smeared my name and was contradictory, evasive, discriminatory and untruthful. At the heart of my case is this, for a journalist from a protected minority who challenges their bosses over truth and accuracy to be falsely dismissed, it's not only a breach of employment and in discrimination law, but it's a danger to us all. The tribunal did not understand our argument and came to the wrong conclusion. And so, we must take the case to appeal and overturn that decision. And to do this, we need your help. We need your help to put a QC onto our team and have the means to take this groundbreaking fight back to the courts and to win.